For more than a century, ballerinas have been putting up with pain to go on point. Now, a former dancer is using technology to reduce toe pain while increasing ballet thrills. They're as elegant as the dancers that wear them, and they allow ballerinas to stand on the tips of their toes. Point shoes. They elevate the female dancer to almost another realm. They allow her to create the illusion of weightlessness, of skimming the stage, of hovering, of floating. They also extend the line of the leg. As a young dancer, Eliza Minden wore point shoes herself. Now she's president of Gaynor Minden Inc. and she's making them. Ballerinas first started dancing on their toes in the 19th century. The Italians invented slippers with a reinforced toe, or toe box. It revolutionized ballet. But while the dance moved into the 20th century, the shoes, made of things like cardboard and glue, did not. The shoe in question is essentially a glorified slipper with a little bit of arch support, very little uh, sole to the shoe, and a very narrow, hard, pointy um, toe box. Dr. John Walter sees the physical cost of the design. He's a podiatrist and professor at Temple University, and he treats ballerinas who suffer from problems related to point shoes. Complaints of joint pain, in particular the big toe, uh, certainly complaints of hammer toes, painful corns and calluses, arch pain, uh, stress-related problems involving their knee, uh, hip, and back. There are economic costs too. Ballet companies can spend up to half a million dollars a year on point shoes. They wear out fast. Eliza Minden experienced the problems firsthand as a dance company manager. I was outraged that dancers were expected to perform in such crummy shoes. Dancers are elite athletes. What they do is as difficult as what rock climbers do, as difficult as what football players do, yet they're expected to perform these athletic and artistic miracles in shoes made of paper and cardboard. She saw how technology had advanced in other athletic footwear. So she set out to improve ballet shoes. It wouldn't be easy. A sneaker designer also has the relative luxury of having a fair bit of space to work with in order to put shock absorbing foams and to put materials that will mold to the user's foot. I don't. I have to make a ballet shoe as thin and as delicate as possible. This factory in Lawrence, Massachusetts was built in the 19th century. Workers there churn out point shoes. It's labor intensive just as it was a hundred years ago. And the Gaynor Minden Valley slippers they make look much the same as others on the outside. On the inside, they're different. Starting with a material called thermoplastic elastomeric. It's an injection molded plastic that goes into the midsole and toe box. It's the same flexible plastic you find in phone cords. It can be flexed thousands of times and never weaken or deform. And also, the thermoplastic elastomerics have some memory. And this is terribly important because in the course of dancing, a dancer makes this position, which is the demi-point position, on her way up and down from the full point position. And she has to be able to go through this position easily, without resistance. But once she's up on full point, she needs that midsole to be just underneath the balls of her feet to provide support. The shoes also contain a thin, shock-absorbing foam. This is a 16th inch of cellular urethane. It goes all throughout the shoe. This is an 8th inch of a different kind of urethane foam to absorb impact under the heel. Here's yet another kind of urethane foam underneath the toes and another 16th of an inch on top of that. This is actually the area of greatest impact when the dancer is jumping. So do the new materials really improve the performance of the shoes and the dancers? Dr. Walter and his colleagues put the shoes to the test. They recruited 25 ballerinas and had them try both the traditional point shoes and the Gaynor Mindens. To get objective data, the Temple team hooked dancers up to a system called an F-scan, or foot scan. There's uh, four sensors per uh, uh, square centimeter, and these are cut to fit each individual ballerina's slipper. Then they go through the five different positions. Many times we will evaluate them uh, in their jump phase from the, uh, the fifth position and they will do this with the sensors in the shoe and they will also do it while on a mat. The sensors transmit information from the shoes to a computer. 
The data shows up graphically as peaks and valleys of foot pressure. The red areas are hot spots of high pressure, and the other colors represent decreasing pressures all the way down to blue zones, the lowest pressure. The researchers found fewer red areas when the dancers wore the new high-tech shoes. We were able to correlate this data and compare the data and come up with statistics that essentially have shown us 18 percent reduction in the overall pressure in the arch area and also a significant decrease in pressure when they are on point. The Royal Ballet and the American Ballet Theatre have bought Gaynor Mindens, but not every dancer is convinced. There are probably a few older dancers who have peculiar ideas about suffering and who feel that it's necessary to suffer to be an artist or that they had to suffer and so the younger generation should not get off more easily. But having sore feet does not make you a better dancer. <laughs> Minden believes her shoes will make for better dancers and better dance. If point shoes can enable them to jump with more abandon because they're not afraid of hurting themselves on landing, then they're going to jump higher and, and more thrillingly. And they'll turn more pirouettes and they'll balance longer and I hope that this in turn will inspire choreographers to come up with new and more wonderful things for dancers to do.